Hey everyone, I'm Andrew, and welcome to Tech Check. Today, I'll be unboxing something I actually already have one of, but everyone can always use a second one of these. It's the CyberPower Battery Backup with Surge Protection, also known as a UPS. Going over the box, the top left here, you have, of course, the CyberPower logo on this nicely faded brown cardboard box. <laughs> Underneath, you got battery backup with surge protection, the possible model that could be in this box, a sticker down here that would usually tell you, like it does, which model is in this box. If you're wondering what this black tape's for, it's because the company that sent it was like, hey, let's write his name and phone number on three or four sides of the box. I'm sure he'd love that. So I just taped over so nobody had any uh, ideas of wanting to call me or something. Of course, you have an image of the uh, product on the box itself. And it does look a bit different, I have to say, than the one that I do have. But it could just be a stock image. Who knows? We'll have to see when we open it up. Looking at the other side. Oh, it's pretty heavy. 16.19 pounds, actually. So not super heavy, but heavy for the size. You got uh, cyber power across the top, battery backup with surge protection. Not really much to see on this side, and again, name, address, phone number, really nice of you, uh, I'm not going to name who sent it, but it is from Newegg, not a Newegg seller though. Then here we go, we got CyberPower, CP850, AVR, LCD, so again, just telling you the models that can come in it, and some quick features, bullet points about the product. Something that I do love about the one that I have right now is this, um, power panel management software on the computer. It tells you how many times there's been spikes, how long it's switched over to battery for, a lot of great information and CyberPower seems to update it very often. So I don't know, ever since I've seen that, I've wanted to put everything on a UPS because I swear the whole house is just gonna burn down or something. But anyways, going on. You got the nine surge protected outlets with five that are battery backup. Now some people were in the reviews saying, oh, only five battery backup, they should all be battery. Well, no, they shouldn't, okay? Put your five main things you want battery there and the rest on your surge protected one. It's not rocket science, people, okay? I know, but how are you gonna fit 600 watts in nine outlets? People are gonna have that way overdrawn. Anyways, it has USB and serial ports, Modem, DSL, broadband, network protection, coax cable, DSS surge protection. All right, that's good. One more side and then we'll open it up. Checking out this last side here. Got, of course, the logo, battery backup, sticker on which model it is. So they got the right model, thank God. Corrugated, recycle, yeah, recycle this box. UPS battery must be recycled. Yeah, don't just throw it in the garbage. A few warnings about using this or whatever. I understand you don't want me blowing up you gotta save yourself some lawsuits but that's about it for the box so how about we cut the tape and open it up so I just ran and grabbed my scissors and now I'm ready to open this box so let's get into it it's just this one piece of tape at the top here holding it open or holding it closed sorry so we'll Cut these pieces and get it opened up. One last side here. And there we go. Let's put these scissors away. Let's see what's inside here. All right, so it seems to be packed in a nice white hard foam. You can see that. Let's grab this and pull it out. A little bit awkward because it's heavy. The styrofoam didn't come out, but that's okay. Sorry about all the screeching. Let's get all these pieces off here to reveal the UPS. And yes, it is actually the exact same one. It has the same everything that uh, I had on my other one. So I'll get all this wrapping taken away, and we'll have a look at it. So I just got rid of all the packaging, 
and fed my cat so she'd stop meowing during my takes. And this is what we're left with. Right here, you have the CyberPower user manual, along with a USB type A to type B that would go from the unit to your computer to go along with the uh, so CyberPower software that you can download from their website to monitor the power usage, if it goes out, how long it's out, uh, control if it shuts things down when it's on battery power, stuff like that, which is really handy to have. Now, on the top of the unit here, first things they want you to know, very important, this UPS is designed with a safety feature to prevent the UPS from powering on during shipment. So basically what they're telling you is so that it doesn't explode and bring down a plane while it's being shipped around the world, they don't charge the batteries that are in here. They come drained and you need to charge them for at least eight hours before first use. That's not a big give up, you know? Okay, so I can't use it the first day. I was expecting that anyways, since I already have one, but just to let you know, if you get one of these, you probably won't be able to use it the day you get it, because it has to be charged. Now looking at the front here, you have this very reflective, very fingerprint grabbing, glossy front black panel, the power button at the top. This right here is where your display would be, so once I plug it in, I'll show you that. Then you have your select and display button, your enter mute button, the cyber power logo down here as well as telling you the model. Then if you look at the side, you have once again the cyber power logo right on the side. Some nice venting across the top and bottom to keep it cool because it does get kind of warm, I know that. And that's on both sides. And then looking at what everybody wants to see, the back of the unit. On the back here, you have your cable in and out, your network cable in and out, as well as your serial and your USB, which is where you'd attach the included USB to go to your computer to work with the software. On this side here, with these gray labeled ports, you have the surge and battery plugs, and there's five of them. Then on this side, the black labeled plugs they're just regular surge protected plugs. So only things you plug in on this side will stay powered on if your power cuts and the battery kicks in. Anything on this side will not stay powered on, but it is protected from surges. Just want everybody to know that because lots of people had an issue with that. Now the last thing on the back here you'll notice is this little red button and that's your circuit breaker reset key. So if circuit ever trips or whatever, you hit that button, you should be good to go. I've never actually had that issue, but if you do, it's good to have it there. Another little feature they have here, not really a feature, but they put this little plastic thing on your plug here so your plug doesn't get bent up and ruined in shipment as well. It's pretty nice. They didn't have to do that, but I'm glad they did. And that's about it for the Cyber Power. CP1000 AVR LCD battery backup with surge protection. I'm going to set it up, charge it, and then show you how the, all the front buttons work and the menus and everything like that. So as you can see, I've got the battery fully charged, everything plugged in, ready to go. I'm only using one bar on the load capacity, which is great because it's giving me 57 minutes of estimated runtime if my power was to go out and would have to be running off battery backup. So that's great. I get almost an hour from this unit right here on my router, my switch, and my modem. So at least if power goes out, I still have internet. Now also what this shows you, like I said, is the load capacity, battery capacity, how your power is coming in right here. It shows the plug and normal. So that means you get normal power straight from the wall and again your estimated runtime. By hitting display here, you can cycle through all your input or all your pages giving you all the information you would probably want to know at a glance like your input voltage Hertz your output voltage and Hertz and you got your output kilowatts your output VA output amperage then it shows you everything in percentages like using 12% of the kilowatts available using 9% of the VA available 
and then here it shows that I've got 100% full battery capacity. Then after this one, it's right back to your estimated runtime main page. Now this display here will stay on for about 30 seconds if you don't touch anything. However, if you hold the display button and wait for the tone, now it's going to stay on constantly. But say you don't like that and you want to turn it back off so it's only on when you're using when you're looking at it. Hold this button again until you hear the two beeps. And there you go. Now it will only come on when you hit display and want to cycle through your pages. Now once again, this mute, if your power was to go out, this would have a little alarm that would go off. And thankfully in this model, because some don't have it, it has a little mute button to shut that alarm off. However, you can, in the software provided, just disable that alarm totally. So let's jump over to that software and see what kind of features it has. I've just loaded up the software for the UPS that I connected to my PC. I know it's not the one that I was showing you that's connected to my home theater, but it's easier than trying to run a USB across the room, and since the software was already set up for this one, the programming is the same, the unit is the same, I thought it'd be alright. Anyways, as you can see, we're currently in the power panel personal the software here, main screen which is basically giving us a quick rundown of how your unit's operating. Here you can see it's in the current status. You've got the electrical power supplied by AC power, just everything you would want to know in it, at a glance about your UPS. On the right side here, you have three boxes that will always be there no matter what, telling you your power source, which currently is the AC utility, your battery capacity, which is at 100% for me, and your estimated runtime, depending on the current UPS load, which for me, is 50 minutes using about 90 watts, right? But since this is at my computer, that fluctuates very much depending on what I'm doing, as you'll probably see throughout this video. Anyways, going to the next tab here is the summary. The summary here is a power problem summary that shows you up to the last week to 24 weeks. If anything has happened, you've had any power outages, under voltage, just any issues that might have actually happened with this that you might not have known about, will be reported here so you can see them. Next, we have the energy reporting section. And for this section, it shows you your consumption in a selected period of time, as well as the cost for that selected period of time. And over here in energy settings is where you input the data so the software can calculate those things for you. Like for me, I'm in Canada, it costs kilowatt per hour, you input all these things for it, or it can just like average it out, give you an average just by clicking your country, which is what I did. And that gives you these energy reporting data here. Going on to the next wheel, which you can probably tell already by the image, will be your settings. Here is where you'll configure your UPS. The settings tab has everything you could want to do, from scheduling to when you want to turn your computer on and off, to notifications if you want to get yourself sent some email notifications if when you're not out and the power goes out it'll just it'll let you know well even when you're home it'll let you know I guess also here you have the option to turn on and off your UPS alarms which I just keep enabled because when they do go off I like to know and you can mute it from the unit itself like I showed you also your software sounds so you know going through certain things and get little ticks and everything but that's enough for that. Let's check the runtime tab. In the runtime tab, this is where you configure it to if you want to keep your computer running when the power goes out, you can choose shut down this computer only when the remaining battery power is between 5 and 10 minutes. I have it at 5. Well, I'm not actually using that one. That's what it defaults to. Then the next option is to preserve battery power, which would shut down the computer after UPS runs on battery power for five, well, from zero to five minutes. I have it set up to run for, if it runs on battery power for five minutes, it'll shut itself down, which is basically what it's saying right there. Use this option to save battery for successive power out, which I get quite a few brownouts. Uh, when it does happen, it happens like often. So that's why I have it set like that. Then here you have the voltage tab, which 
lets you set your safe voltages. My current voltage being 118 is basically right in the middle where I need it to be. But the UPS will intervene in these other default settings when the AC utility voltage goes below 100 volts or goes above 139. You can set these to basically, as you can see, that's your range right there. I have them set to the default values because I figure that's what it comes with. That's what it should work with. Next, you have your self-test page. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to make sure your unit's working properly, initiate a self-test. It'll click over to battery power for a few seconds, make sure everything's running great, click back over, and set you up with a result. As you can see, the last time I ran was 816, and it passed. I run this maybe once a month, just to make sure everything's still working properly. Last but not least here, you have the advanced tab, which will show you your input, which you can change your input voltage sensitivity from low, medium, high. I just have it set to medium because that's what it was default. And then you can change your shutdown type. So you can specify how the computer is shut down when the software takes over to shut down your computer. You can either have it go into hibernation or shut down. I have it set right to shut down because I don't want any issues. I just want it to be powered off. If there's no power, just shut it right down. Anyways, that's about it for the software. Oh, no, one more tab here. We have the last one, which is the information tab. And here just gives you a little about your cyber panel, power panel, personnel, personal, your version number, your hardware information. So the one that I have hooked up to it right now, right? And then the web support information, your website, products, contacts, your copyright information. And there we go. Now that is all for cyber powers, power panel, personal, UPS computer software. Well, thanks for watching my video on the CyberPower 1000 AVR LCD battery backup UPS and surge protector. I really like this, which is why I bought a second one. And if you like it too, I have some links posted in the description below where you can learn some more about it or possibly get one for yourself. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up leave a comment, and possibly subscribe. I'm Andrew, and this was Tech Check.